Hi there, that time again. Welcome to yep. the 4 to 5. Lauren Coleman, Eric Chilton, Monique Robinson, Stacy Spivey, we're all together. Yeah, happy hump day everybody. Welcome to the 4 to 5, whether you're watching at home on Firestick Roku or the WFMY News 2 app. Lots to talk about today, so we're going to start things off with the major developments on the crisis in Ukraine. Several events have unfolded today, and we're here to break them down step by step. Yes, early this morning we heard from a Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. He, said he had the rare opportunity as a foreign leader to address the U.S. Congress and the American people. He used powerful words as he pleaded for more support. You'll hear more on that coming up in just a minute. Shortly after, President Biden responded by offering to send more money to Ukraine, but he didn't honor Zelensky's main request, which was this. Russia has turned the Ukrainian sky into a source of death for thousands of people. I have a need. I need to protect uh, our sky. Zelensky referenced Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech, and he called for a humanitarian no-fly zone. President Biden said the U.S. and NATO are opposed to enforcing a no-fly zone, but will send an additional $800 million in military support. It includes 800 anti-aircraft systems to make sure the Ukrainian military can continue, to, can continue to stop the planes and helicopters that have been attacking their people. During the president's plea before Congress, he shared video of Russian attacks and airstrikes pummeling Ukrainian cities. Right now, the scene remains dire as Ukraine officials confirm at least 500 more people killed by shelling. They say since the start of the war, more than 600 buildings were crushed, including schools, nurseries, hospitals and homes. As attacks increase in, our, in Ukraine, our thoughts and prayers are with everyone impacted. For a continuing coverage, head to our website. That's WFNYNews2.com. All right, let's turn our attention to the skies now. Right now, rain showers popping up across the triad. A live look at downtown Greensboro here. It's been kind of light and intermittent, uh, but it looks like some more of this is on the way. Let's check out, uh, see what's happening with the forecast with Monique. Yes, yeah, certainly. This is a look at Burlington where often we look at this camera view and we're able to see these flags waving here. We're not seeing that now as winds are calm, but if you draw your eyes really closely to your screen, you can see how a lot of these roads out in Burlington are actually kind of wet. You can kind of take notice how they're a little bit of a darker black. The cloud cover really blanketing the entirety of the sky and you can see the showers on our satellite and radar. This is looping through the last three hours. You can see the rain is here, but you can see some of those have pockets in between allowing for some dry time, but it is certainly not over. When I widen this view, not only for us to look at the central Piedmont, but you can see South Carolina here where we're seeing some storms that are crossing the central portion of South Carolina with a lot of lightning with it. That's those strikes that you're seeing as it crosses there. So this system will continue through this evening. If you are heading out the door, whether it is dry right now or not, make sure if you're heading out, just grab the umbrella with you. As like I said, this rain will continue through this evening and the start of your Thursday morning. A look at the future cast, keeping the temperatures in the 50s over the next couple of hours, upper 50s overnight. We're going to get a break, in fact, from some of the rain, but then it will continue in the wee hours of your Thursday and then clear behind it, giving way to a drier ending to your Thursday with partly cloudy skies and skies continuously improving through the evening. But then clouds return once again as we go throughout the day on Friday because the rain is back again. I'll talk about it coming up in just a bit. Just as Americans are taking off their mask, another COVID variant is spreading across the world. The new subvariant of the virus BA2 is 30% more transmissible than Omicron, but doesn't seem to be more severe. Scientists believe it is fueling the rise in cases in nearly half of European countries. Nearly three weeks ago, the UK dropped its last COVID rules, only to now see a 50% spike in hospitalizations and daily cases. Despite the global spike, the White House is confident America has the tools to keep COVID at bay. What we do know about the BA2 variant, which I think is important context for people, is that it's circulated in the United States for some time. Uh, we've been watching it closely, of course. I would also note that um, while BA2 is, more transmissible, is a more transmissible version of Omicron, uh, the tools we have, uh, including mRNA vaccines, therapeutics, and tests, are all effective tools against the virus. And we know because it's been uh, in the country. 
The BA2 Omicron variant is also raising the risk of more supply chain delays in the U.S. Right now, China is dealing with its worst COVID-19 outbreak since the start of the pandemic. Authorities have tightened the antivirus controls at ports as part of the country's zero tolerance strategy. For now, companies are using factories in other parts of the country, but if cases continue to spread, American electronic and automotive industries could see disruptions. Here locally, we are continuing to shave off the number of North Carolinians in the hospital with COVID-19. The state is reporting 799 patients today. It's 33 fewer patients than yesterday and nearly 300 fewer than this time last week. And you can probably notice that downward trend that we are seeing and it appears to be flattening over the past month and a half. This number was rapidly declining over the past week. It slowed down, but the good news is it's still going down just at a slower pace. We haven't seen numbers this low since last July. As we navigate the coronavirus pandemic, it's important to note the people working to keep us safe. This year's theme for Women's History Month is women providing healing, promoting hope. Dr. Kismakia Corbett has done just that. At just 36 years old, she worked night and day with a team of scientists developing Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine in record time. Since then, Dr. Corbett has taken on vaccine hesitancy, or as she prefers to call it, vaccine inquisitiveness. By calling them vaccine inquisitive, you Give them the liberty to be the scientists, actually. Ask the question. Ask the question. And if I can, I will answer it for you. A lot of these people have just never had their opinions heard before. You know what I also heard in that, though, is that as a woman, young woman, you are allowed to have a voice. That is one of my daily affirmations. Mm. Is it? Yes. I am strong. I am beautiful. I have a voice. Say it out loud every single day. You'll start to believe it. And then when someone doesn't believe it, you won't care. Earlier today, Dr. Corbett sat down with CBS Morning and Melinda French Gates. The bill and the Melinda Gates Foundation provided funding for her studies and her push for equality in health care. I mean, talk about black girl magic, guys. I just I love hearing about her story and her work with getting this vaccine out there. I say affirmations every morning. Mine's mm -hmm. similar to that, but I'm going to add that in there about I have a voice. That was beautifully said um, because the affirmations are really important as you move in this world to make sure that you affirm yourself how powerful you really are before you get into spaces because sometimes people don't always affirm that for mm -hmm. you. I feel like I need to start doing some daily affirmations because <laughs> yes. it sounds like it clearly works for people who are, who are successful in life. So. Maybe I'll start doing that. It's funny how it doesn't, it doesn't take as much as you think. You know, you just need something to kind of remind her. And, and like you said, daily makes a difference. Um, people that wake up every day, I don't do this. My wife does this sometimes, but she'll wake up every day and look up a different uh, saying or phrase that's kind of empowering for anybody. She does that with a little calendar. She buys this every year. So I think just even just to do that, just to rip off that page and read it every day makes a difference. I also love this theme for Women's History Month because when we think about women being providers and healers, they've been doing this since the beginning of time, whether at work or even in the household. But I think it's only, you know, perfect to highlight these first responders who have been, you know, on the front lines, you know, looking out for everyone around the world during these crazy times with COVID. And I mean, we're talking the COVID vaccine, Yes. you know, not just even, I mean, granted, <laughs> every single first responder was extremely helpful, but I mean, we're talking the vaccine and it's a woman. That's something to praise. Um, and definitely and we, real power. Yeah, you go, girl. <laughs> I mean, it's so awesome to see that. Lauren's right too. There's nothing like a mother's love. That's yeah. that's different. That's very different. All right, we'll take a short break. We're coming right back.
You know, we hear lots of complaints about social media, but once in a while, we hear something like this. Elisa Goebel had never met Ed Taylor, but after she saw a post about him on social media, it caused her to make a big decision in her life, and it was all due to Ed's story. Listen up. I found out that uh, I, something was wrong. I was in the gym. I had zero energy. That was not, you know, usual for me. So I went into the, the doctor. He said, your kidneys are at three, you know, uh, stage three kidney failure. And so from there, you get symptoms like fatigue, chronic fatigue. You, you don't have a lot of energy. And uh, when you do dialysis, you're on the machine pretty much all night from 5.30 for myself until 7.30 in the morning. Yeah, Elisa had a story as well, and this would bond them for life. Listen up. So my mom donated three years ago to somebody else in Greensboro. So when that happened, that kind of planted the seed in my head that donation was something that I was interested in. Um, but I just didn't feel like that was the right time to do it. And I was, I mean, I'm still young, but I was younger then. And there's risks to that as well as risks to waiting. So I waited. Um, and then about, I guess a year ago is when your story came yeah. out and I saw it shared on Facebook. And for some reason, it just really caught my attention. And I was like, that's interesting. And ironically, the same time that I opened it, my mom walked around the corner and I said, hey, mom, did you see um, somebody from Havana Fells needs a kidney. And she was like, no. And I said, well, if I was interested, what would I do for that? So six months later now, she donated a kidney to Ed, completely changing his entire outlook. In my mind, she's a superhero. I mean, you know, kidneys don't grow on trees and you can't, you really can't buy one. So, you know, to, to be selfless like that. And I'm from Jersey and I'm pretty, pretty ex-military. I'm a pretty rough guy. And, to give of yourself like that is pretty amazing to me. So the interesting thing about this, obviously, um, she didn't have to donate an organ, right? She just, mm -hmm. her mother had done it, and she said, I'm thinking about doing something like this. She saw that so social media post. When they met in the hospital, because they found out, you know, he said he wanted to know who donated the kidney, um, come to find out, he is friends with her father. Whoa. He works at Havana Phil's cigar shop, and he, he was friends with her father, wow. and that was just kind of mind-blowing for all of them. And in a little bit, we're going to talk about they're having a big golf tournament and to raise some money for a charity. We'll tell you that story, too. But what a crazy coincidence there, and Such now they're like small, best buddies. Such a small world. I want to touch upon what you said. This just shows how giving of a heart that she has, the fact that she didn't know him. Because you know a lot of people will say, I'll give a kidney to my love. I'll give a kidney to my child, but this was just a complete stranger and she just happened to see a post online. Yeah, and the fact that she was a match, because mm -hmm. you have to find a match too, right? Yes, and in fact, that was just like, she, literally, I think she said, within a, a couple of weeks, Ed was on the list for July of that year. Yeah. And then she came in and it was an immediate match. Uh, so wow. it was a lot of, a lot of help from above, you know? Well, I can't wait to hear more of their story, Eric. Great job. Yeah, we'll have more on that coming up in just a minute. Stay there.
waking up this morning and scrolling on my social media, everyone's talking about daylight savings time and how that affecting how that will potentially affect us. So I have some explainers here to kind of break things down to put things into perspective for you. This is what web, uh, timing is like currently. So today our sunrise was at 728 AM sunsets forecast for 727 PM that allows for 12 hours and a minute about of daylight hours. Now, unfortunately, with the clouds in place, we haven't seen too much sun today, but that is the number of daylight hours. And as we head towards the middle portions of the spring season, we're going to see that uh, change a bit as sunrise is set for 631 AM in about six weeks and sunset is at 803 PM. So if we weren't to do the fall back situation that we generally do every fall season, we do spring forward, fall back. If we weren't to do that in that first uh, Sunday of November on November 6. If we weren't doing that, this is how things would set up moving forward to start out the year, end out the year and then start out the next year. So when we look at the timing of things for November 15th, sunrise would be at 756 AM and sunset would be 612 PM. Now that doesn't sound too crazy, but when you get to December 15th, we're talking a sunrise of at 823 AM. Now think about the winter season. Oftentimes in December, even this past Last December, we had many days where we were waking up to snow or ice, black ice concerns. So if the sunrise is at a later time, this is in fact the time when most times that gives the sunshine an opportunity to melt the ice around that 830 when it's rising at 730. So we delay school an hour to give time for that ice to melt. But if the sunrise is rising at 830, students will have to not start school until about 930 and it would have to really delay how the timing of when school would start. That's a big concern for schools. There are also other factors that come into play, especially during the winter season. But overall, that's kind of a good outlook as to what you can expect if we were to not make that transition to fall back moving forward. So hopefully that clears the air a little bit as folks are talking about this uh, daylight saving story as we continue to see how that will pan out. But so you know, for tomorrow, rain chances are on the decline, but the temperatures are on the warm up for your St. Patrick's Day. I'll have more details with the seven day before this 4 p.m. hour ends. Great explainer, Monique. Learn some new things. Sunday marks the official start of spring and seasonal cleaning. It's on the mind of many folks. A new poll, one poll survey found more than three in four Americans say home tidiness and personal well-being go hand in hand. Participants say they need about 16 days on average to tackle their spring cleaning tasks. Cleaning the bathroom was the top priority, followed by the fridge and getting the garage in order. So I asked you on Facebook, What's your top priority to tackle for spring cleaning? Bobby Odom says I'm going to give my house a good pressure washing and then paint my shutters and front door. Barbie Wood says dust, dust and more dusting, change air filters and clean my deck and relax. Melissa Murray wrote my garage has just been collecting junk all winter. And Joy Mott says changing winter clothes for summer clothes. John Munn dust and spider webs. Jim Pond says, find someone else to do it. Uh, I wish I could do the same, <laughs> but you know, That's with them funny. gas prices right now, I can't hire somebody right? to do that. <laughs> yeah, well, Chilton, he was making a noise when you were talking about uh, the person who needs to clean out the garage. The garage. Well, what I want to do is purge kid toys because a lot of mm. the toys that we have in big bins, my little ones have already outgrown. Mm -hmm. I want all that stuff out. I mean, I'll take them. Uh, that's true. Oh my gosh. Or you could do yeah, a garage be, sale. I've got so yeah, much. So that's, that's what Tyler and Drew love to do that because mm -hmm. they're all about making money on the side. So that's what they do. My mom yeah. sold all of our Barbies and our McDonald's and Burger King's toys that we had. And you could sell them for like 25 cents oh, and people yeah. will buy them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or drop everything off at Goodwill. This time of year, I mean, I obviously, I've told y'all before, I love to clean. It's a stress reliever for me. I know I'm weird like that, but this time of year, it's a good time for me to look at the winter clothes that I didn't wear. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, if I didn't wear this this season, I'm probably not going to wear it next season. So I'll either do consignment shop or just take it to Goodwill. We donated. I just did that. Went through my closet and threw out a ton of stuff. My, my closet is my big one too, because I always feel like I don't have enough space. And last year I gave away a couple bags to the Salvation Army, but I feel like every year it's just like tons and tons of clothes that I'm like, hey, I don't even wear this stuff. Right. Let me give it to someone who can use it. 
But are you like me and kind of worried that it's going to come back in style and you're like, no, I got to hold on to it. <laughs> yeah, I am kind of like that. But then it's like, okay, this has been in here for like three seasons right? now. Someone else can Time use to go. it. <laughs> if you're cheap like me, I hate clothes shopping. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Think about this, if someone stole thousands of dollars from you, could you just let it go? Well, that's exactly what the owners of one California bar did. They say a woman took a $4,000 cognac from behind the bar and they don't want to press charges. They say she swiped a century old Remy Martin bottle made in France that cost about $200 per pour. According to the San Jose Mercury News, someone returned the unopened liquor bottle on, on the woman's behalf. The owners have banned the woman from the bar, but say with everything going on in the world, she deserves a second chance. Good for them for doing that. I mean, at least, you know, I mean, I know she's banned from the bar, but that's that's low grade consequences compared to what could have happened. Yeah. I think the fact that it was unopened when it yes. came back and everything was still in place, it's like, okay, we're not going to press charges. We have our bottle, but I hope whoever turned it in on her behalf talked to her and was like, this is not good. You cannot do this. So she doesn't do it somewhere else. That's true. If that makes sense because they're giving her a pass, but if you haven't learned from the situation. You know, yeah. I was at a restaurant one night when someone walked around and I, I, I saw this. It's kind of the same thing, mm -hmm. but they were joking, but they took it and you don't, you're not supposed to go yeah, behind how the did, bar. How right? do you just get they behind the bar? They just walked around and took it and then was acting like that. And I remember looking up going, you are a fool. And the waiter <laughs> came over and said, put that down. And he said, I was just joking, but who knows if he was going to, I mean, I don't know. They should have like an alarm system that if you don't work there and have like a band, it goes rah, 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 That's right. as yeah. soon as you, because uh, some of those liquor bottles are very expensive. Very expensive. I didn't yeah. know $4,000, but I know cognac is like a pretty pricey. I would yeah. assume she's probably pretty embarrassed. And I would also assume if she was at a bar and she did that, she probably had a little too much she to might, drink. Yeah, so if they banned her, is there going to be like a bolo sign of her? Know, like, how I do they know, know yeah. who it is? It's probably just the staff, you know. <laughs> okay. It's, who knows? Who knows? We'll She'll come in there with the sky and sneak it right. out again. All right, let's get to another thoughtful moment in today's U Day with Coach Lamont about the impact of the company you keep. 
you surround yourself with five fools, you're going to become the sixth. If you surround yourself with wisdom-filled people, you're also going to become the sixth. See the equation here? We are relationship sponges soaking in the people around us. If you notice that there were things about you that you're not pleased with, you have to first ask yourself, did this behavior come from me or the people that are in my life? The reason we are still sharing space with some is out of a false obligation. Remember, leeches aren't picky about who they suck blood from. It is time to stop allowing people to suck the life out of you while they are living their lives without thinking of your life. Now is the time, my friend, to no longer be a sponge to the people that no longer benefit you, but be a sponge to those who could prosper you forward. This is Coach Lamont. Make today your best you day. I'll see you tomorrow. I always like to say energies are contagious. You are who you surround yourself with. My mother, just that the graphic you see on the, on the, the uh, screen right now, she would always just say, the company you keep. Mm -hmm. And then she'd it's walk off. so you know? true. I mean, just thinking about a friend that I had in my life, she was there for a season and I needed her for that season, but then she wasn't the nicest person. And my husband just kept telling me, Stacy, she's not sitting here worrying about you every mm -hmm. day. So why are you worrying about her? You need to just have people in your life that fuel you with positive energy and make sure that you know that you're loved. Mm -hmm. Surround yourself with people, people who inspire. That's why exactly. we like to surround ourselves with you guys. And who love you. Very important. <laughs> we'll be back. Mic check, Jalen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sorry about that. Mic check, Jet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jalen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, bro, that's all I got. Welcome back to your four to five. Lauren has moves today. <laughs> Lauren Coleman, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Eric Jilton, Monique Robinson, and Stacey Spivey with you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, sorry, still I got the whole doing this uh, yeah, <laughs> threw everybody off in my wave. Welcome to the Vorta 5 here on WFNY News 2, Firestick, Roku, and the WFNY News 2 app. And we're also on Facebook as well, so make sure you come and join the conversation. But let's get things started with your Vorta 5 roundup. Police are looking for someone who they say stole over 400 gallons of gas from a gas station. Take a look at the surveillance video. This was recorded Monday night around 11 at the Busy Bee gas station on North Main Street in High Point. 
In this video here, you can see several people pulling up to the pump and just driving off. The owner thinks the suspects were somehow able to bypass the payment system and pump for free. Officers say more than 400 gallons of gas were stolen. If you know anything about this, contact police. Right now, we're also working to learn more about a fire at a mobile home. Madison Fire Department says it happened this morning on Madison Beach Road. Crews say when they got to the scene, heavy smoke was seen coming out of the double wide. Less than an hour ago, officials reopened the road leading to the home. Right now, we are working to confirm whether or not people were inside that mobile home at the time of the fire. Right now on our WFY News 2 app and on air and online, we'll keep you updated there. Today, North Carolina A&T State University students are back in class. The campus was hit with an internet outage on Monday. As a result, in-person learning was canceled and students had to learn remotely. The university says most services are restored now, but employees are encouraged to stay remote if possible. It's still not clear what caused the outage. New at four, legislators are weighing whether to expand Medicaid in our state. Today, the former governor of Ohio and others pitched a compassionate plea to increase the program. He says doing so has improved health comes and has possibly, positively impacted hospitals in his state. North Carolina is among dozens of others that have an expanded Medicaid for those who make too much to qualify but can't afford private insurance. When you think about a stroke, you probably associate it with someone older, maybe a grandparent in your life, but local doctors say they're seeing a rise in young patients with strokes. Last weekend, Justin Bieber's wife, Haley Baldwin Bieber, went to the hospital for stroke-like symptoms. According to CBS News, test results showed she suffered a very small blood clot in her brain. Her story grabbing a lot of attention because she's only 25 years old. Doctors I spoke with hope her story brings awareness to stroke symptoms and preventative measures, especially because they say someone in North Carolina is hospitalized with a stroke every 20 minutes. Doctors with Cone Health and Navant Health agree there could be multiple reasons younger people are experiencing strokes or stroke like symptoms. Those include smoking, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, poor diet and exercise. Genetics can also play a role, but Dr. Chris Tristy, excuse me, Baggett says young women are especially at risk when pregnant or on birth control. That high estrogen state is associated with an increased risk of stroke as well. Is that estrogen from the from being naturally pregnant or from from the um, oral contraceptive hormones that kind of makes the blood a little thicker and more likely to form those blood clots that can go to the brain. Dr. Lauren Peruski agrees and says COVID-19 also increased the risk of strokes. The last couple of years, a lot of people have been trapped inside. The gyms have been closed, ordering in food. So that's kind of contributing, I think, to that trend in the younger population. And Both doctors say it's so vital to know the symptoms of a stroke. So remember this. B, FAST, it's an acronym for those symptoms. B is for balance issues. E for eyes, if you can't see well or maybe have loss of vision. F is for maybe your face drooping, specifically on one side. A is for arm or leg, where you maybe can't feel your arm or leg, like having numbness. S is for speech difficulty, maybe you're slurring your words, you can't understand what people are saying. And T is for terrible headache, which is usually a sudden onset uh, of a terrible headache, and it's usually worse than your typical headache. It can also mean time. It means time to get to the ER. So if you know anyone that's experiencing any of these symptoms, or maybe you yourself, call 911 or go immediately to the ER. There are treatments doctors can provide within the first few hours of symptoms when they begin, but after about three to four hours, there's not much they can do. We turn our eyes to the sky now and talk about uh, rain showers. They are popping up all across the triad. You see that live look at downtown Greensboro. Rain's been intermittent, Monique, and it looks like uh, we may see some more of this. Yeah, you can see those droplets collecting there in our Greensboro sky cam. This is a look at UNC Greensboro, just a time lapse over the last several hours, and you can see some rain has been collected a little bit over uh, that camera as well. But for the most part, what you're seeing there is those thick clouds blanketing our skies. Now, regardless if you are seeing rain or not right now, you are certainly going to see clouds in your sky. But for the most part, the main story is like Eric mentioned, is that intermittent rain, which means you may see rain now, you may not, but regardless of the fact, you will see it over the next 
next couple of hours because this rain is moving from the south towards the north and it's becoming heavier at times. And we're seeing that even now those yellow and red returns you're seeing down towards the South Carolina border inching its way closer is going to make for heavier rainfall in our area as we continue overnight. We may get a break from the rain early in the day Thursday, but then we're going to continue with some lighter rain thereafter. Things drying out for the latter part of your Thursday. Friday waking up, things should be dry. And as we continue through your Friday, rain conditions should not be a factor except for when we get to the evening and we transition to your Saturday. That's when rain returns back to the forecast. At times we'll look at some stronger wind gusts, but here's a look at your seven day, including the weekend forecast and the start to next week which has a midweek chance of rain for your Wednesday. Sports fans from across the nation, even around the world, will be glued to their TVs for the next three weeks as we watch to see who will be crowned NCAA Tournament Champions. WFNY News 2's Jalen Gilkey is here with a preview of the action still to come. Jalen. Yeah, Lauren. Well, yesterday marked the official, unofficial beginning of this year's tournament with two of the first four games taking place. In yesterday's first game, Texas Southern, they beat Texas A&M Corpus Christi and now advanced to take on number one seed Kansas. And in the second game, Indiana took down, they took down Wyoming and are now headed for a matchup with St. Mary's. And today we get another double feature. First up at 640, it's Wright State versus Bryant University. And at 940, it's Notre Dame taking on Rutgers. Winner advances to the round of 64. And since we're talking March Madness, I don't think there's a person in our area that loves the NCAA tournament more than Danny Cronin. For the last 34 years, Danny has created his own bracket to keep up with all the action. But this year is a bit different for Danny because he's got a special helper this March. My, my oldest son, who just turned nine, he, he's been into the tournament the last couple of years but hasn't really done his own bracket. So this year he said, Dad, can you... You know, can you get, get my own big board and I can draw it? I said, yeah, of course. Coming up at 5 p.m., you'll hear more from Danny about his three-decade-plus long tradition. That is so cool. All right, earlier in the show, we talked about how Elisa Goble donated a kidney to Ed Taylor. Well, there's a charity golf tournament coming up, and this is going to help out in several different ways, several different charities, but Ed Taylor's story is a part of this. I spoke with Philip Siegel of Havana Fills to find out the tournament's backstory. This is our fourth annual uh, golf tournament. It's uh, in memory of my father who uh, passed away from stomach cancer um, about four years ago in July. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we do this memorial tournament to raise money for uh, uh, stomach, care aware stomach cancer awareness um, and research as well. And uh, it's a great cause. And, you know, last year was an amazing turnout. We raised a ton of money for Debbie's Dream Foundation, and uh, we're looking to beat that this year. So the tournament boasts a long drive contest. They also have a closest to the pin contest as well as, of course, food and drinks. Philip says, of course, it's all about having a good time, but also raising money. And there's a special tip of the hat to Ed into all this as well. We're going to do a, a live auction and a, a silent auction at the award ceremony taking place at Havana Phil's. And... Uh, the proceeds for those auctions will go to Big Ed to help with his medical costs and all of the medicine that he has to uh, take to uh, stay well. So to tie all this together, basically practicing your golf swing there, Elsie? Yeah, yeah. You got it down. <laughs> um, tie it all together here. So Philip's dad, Phil Sr., mm -hmm. opened Havana Phil's. Um, he was actually a friend of mine. He passed away quickly, uh, suddenly from stomach cancer. Philip took over this. Ed works at Havana Phil's, mm -hmm. and that's how they're connected here. So they want to help him. Medical bills are no joke, right? And this is no. the first time they're doing this tournament. No, fourth time they've done the tournament, um, but it's building. So they think this one, because now that COVID is, mm -hmm. you know, on the downturn, they think this one's going to be a big one. I'm just so amazed how everybody is connected in this, how he mm -hmm. works with him, and they've been already doing this tournament. And then Ed knew the girl that donated the kidney's father. Like, it's just this crazy. <laughs> Web. Yeah, it was just meant to be. I love how that they're, they're um, adding on, you know, this special part of it just for him mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. raise money for him. Because like you said, those medical bills, they can add up very quickly. I hope that both of them, Ed and the girl that you talked to earlier, are going to be there. 
I'm you know? sure they will be. Yeah. I know Ed's going to be there, but I'm sure she'd be there too. He um, also said that you know his dad was a huge sports collector, mm -hmm. especially big, huge NC State fan and Carolina Hurricanes fan. So you'll have lots of uh, things to bid on at that um, auction that are going to be pretty high dollar. Great, great event. It's and all the cool. details will be online? On the line. Give me time to write that story. We'll get that <laughs> on there for you. We're coming right back. Do it, Elsie. Oh, look at all the rain. Hello, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie. They forever go together like a classic combination. What is breakfast to you? I want you to check out these selections. And which one is you? Are we like the bagel person? Are we the eggs and bacon? Are we the pancakes? Maybe it's just a cup of coffee because you can't stomach anything else. <laughs> so what is breakfast on a regular basis? Bacon and eggs. Mm, okay. On a regular basis? On a regular basis? You're, no, you're waking not, up making bacon and no, eggs? You're not eating regular. Like, I thought you meant what's my like Jimmy Dean microwavable stuff. Uh -huh. Children said he ate meatloaf this morning for breakfast. I do. I eat like lunch and dinner food for breakfast a lot. Mm, interesting. I, I like the overnight oats. Uh-huh. In a cup of coffee, that's usually what I do. Okay. Yeah, um, definitely coffee, usually yogurt with granola, but on the weekends, I love pancakes mm. and waffles and donuts, all the sweet stuff. <laughs> all the good stuff. All right. Now, is what you eat now for breakfast what you grew up eating, or has that changed over time and why? Uh, I usually, when I was younger, I did a lot of cereal mm -hmm. before school. Yeah. I mean, I did cereal in college and even as, um, you know, a few years ago, but now that I'm trying to like get into a healthier lifestyle, I've switched more to the yogurt and the oats and things like that. Yeah, I was cereal for me as a kid every day, all day, it seems like. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I don't think I ever changed that until I got in maybe high school. That was just the staples. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that I always have had a sweet tooth because I was cereal, uh, toaster strudel. Ooh, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Eggo waffles. Hot tarts. Mm, yeah. That toaster strudel. Okay. Toaster strudel, not the healthiest options, <laughs> but <laughs> Consumer Reports has a few healthy options and they aren't time suckers. The almonds have a pretty good flavor. I do taste the cinnamon. It's very faint, which is kind of refreshing. 
All right, Consumer Reports taste testers found some good for you cereals that are tasty as well. Here are some of their top picks. Nature's Path Organic Heritage Flakes, Post Great Grains and Raisins, Dates and Pecans, and General Mills Cheerios. Now, all of these are whole grains. That's the bottom line. But no matter what cereal you choose, they say look for added sugar on the label and keep that number under six grams per serving. Now, if you're a grab it and go kind of breakfast eater, Consumer Reports picks yogurt, and we've heard that come up. Uh, with its protein, calcium, and potassium, avoid the added sugars by buying plain and then topping it with fruit. The other Consumer Reports pick was cottage cheese. Low in calories, high in protein, can make you feel full. Eat it on its own, put it in smoothies, or get this, I've never heard this before, scramble it into eggs. Did not know that was a thing. All right, now that we're on to the eggs, participants felt fuller and more satisfied, they said, after eating an egg breakfast compared to eating something like cereal. And add some fiber with leafy dark greens, tomatoes, peppers, sweet potatoes. Make it a breakfast that's healthy and delicious too. So maybe you'll incorporate one of these things. I'm here for breakfast tomorrow, people. Feel free to bring it by. Well, when some folks hear physics, they cringe, and others hear a word that means a world of opportunities. Two women are leading the charge at DTCC to have more students walk away feeling the latter. So what is this? This is a north magnetic north pole. This is a magnetic south pole. Always willing to help students learn. Awesome. 
teach as well. That's how students at Guilford Technical Community College describe associate physics professor Jyoti Nair. F equal Q V cross B. While growing up in India, real life science geniuses inspired Nair to go to school for physics. There is a one famous woman, mathematician in India called Shakuntala Devi, and she was known for the mathematics. So she can do anything within a second. Nair also had an out of this world woman who inspired her more. So obviously I heard about Kalpana Chawla, first woman which went to the space, you know. Nair wanted to be next. She joined the Indian Space Research Organization, the National Space Agency of India. It is similar to NASA in America. Due to my own personal constraint, because we have to travel a lot when you do a research. My daughter was just born and I cannot go there. I have to take care of her. Nair is one of two full-time physics instructors at GTCC. With our blue dot had to travel that longer outer part. The other one is Ann Simpson. Before we get started, just a couple of reminders. Your Chapter 4 homework is due tonight. In 2017, Simpson became the only female department chair at the college when she was named Chair for Engineering, Astronomy, and Physics. Unfortunately, there are not enough females in certain positions, and it's competitive. Simpson says men don't face the same problems women do in the science field. I think naturally for males, You've got those built-in mentorships, you've got the old boy network, you've, you see lots and lots of people who look like you. So I think for females at times, unfortunately, they don't always support each other. Nair adds, the gender equality gap in STEM keeps growing because mothers can't do it all. Always women has to sacrifice more. Uh, especially once they start a family. But Simpson says the physics classroom is a space of support, no matter the gender or who's teaching. She says all students should walk away knowing. Yes, I do fit in. Yes, I should be here. I belong here. I can do this. What I thought was interesting when I asked, you know, why do you think a lot of women are not in STEM fields? She said because oftentimes when you do finally get to those roles, people think it's a competition. So the women mm. don't help each other. Mm. They uh -huh. work against each other. And I thought about it and I was like, I guess that could be kind of true. When you're very few and far between, you want to be the one to mm -hmm. get there. And so people start competing rather than working together. That stuck out to me too, almost like a crab in a barrel mentality. And I think we should really combine forces and help each other because then we can both succeed and we can both, it's a quicker process to make a room at the table for all of yeah. us. Yeah, I've never seen more women in STEM than now. I mean, I know it's on the increase. Like when I was a kid, if you had a physics club or a science club, it was almost all boys. Mm -hmm. And then now it's changing. Definitely. Yeah, what stood out to me about what she was saying is she was like, we don't have any mentors, but it's great that more women are getting involved because they can now be mentors to those kids that are growing up wanting to do this. Very good. Absolutely. Nice story. Like that. All right, take a break. We'll see you in a few. One, two, three, four, five, U.S. This is a mic check for you. I don't know. Hi there, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa. Hey, mic check, one, two, three, four, five, six. Check, 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 mic check. Hello, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie. They forever go together. Hey, Mike Chuck, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Madison Beach Road is now back open after investigators closed.
Mic check Jalen, mic check Jalen. There we go, there we go, there we go. There we go, mic check Jalen. It's time for my two cents. For decades, daylight saving time has been a part of time. We set our clocks ahead one hour in the spring and back an hour in the fall. But soon, this biannual ritual could come to an end. There's a bill in Congress to make daylight saving permanent. It's already passed the Senate. The debate is never ending. Some say DST is bad for your health. Research shows changing the clock by an hour disrupts our body clocks, which can result in tiredness or even increase the risk of a heart attack. Others may say it doesn't save much energy, which once was one of the key driving factors for implementing it in the first place. But for every con, there's a pro. Pros that I think hold more weight. Reports show daylight saving time promotes an active lifestyle. When the sun sets later, there is time to go for a brisk walk after work. Outdoor activities can be a great stress reliever after a busy work day. Daylight saving time can be good for the economy. An article I read states later daylight means more people shopping after work, which means an increase in retail, gas and snack sales. I, for one, don't feel like running errands when it's dark out. Lastly, longer daylight hours promote safety. Studies found it contributes to improve road safety and a decrease in robberies. I wouldn't mind if daylight saving became permanent, but we'll just have to wait and see. In the meantime, go enjoy the daylight hours while you can. That's my two cents. That's your four to five. WFNY News 2 at five starts now. It has been nearly three years since High Point streets were flooded with people for the spring furniture market. In 2020, it was canceled due to the pandemic, and last year it was delayed until the 